La is such an important house because it's a boom time um, grand mansion that demonstrates boom time Melbourne and it's got the most amazing finishes and fittings and we're about to do some works, conservation works on the tower. And just to give you a bit of background on the tower, it was originally part of the 1873 extensions to um, La Bassa, and it was an open tower actually in the top room which used to be an open deck and you can see down here the flagpole which was cut off when they roofed the tower. Uh, the conservation works we're undertaking are like for like repairs and we're not changing anything about the building we're just conserving what's here and dealing with water ingress issues. We're now in the room below the, the roof, which would have been the original top room of the tower. And as you can see, it has amazing views on four sides. So on the ceiling, we'll be matching in the plaster as closely as possible to the original and retaining as much plaster as possible. And there's also a method called Westcox, which is a glue that we can um, insert from the top that will fix into the existing plaster so we can retain it. Once the plaster work's done, we'll be painting with a distemper. And that distemper will allow the walls to continue to breathe. It's not an acrylic paint, which is detrimental to the plaster work. And Putting a distemper on won't do any harm to the building and we'll just have this white appearance which may well have been the original. So it's really important that we use the right materials that match the original because otherwise we might be doing more damage than good to the building. And that's why we need these specialist conservation processes and investigation into the original materials. I'm wrapping a piece of 19th century wallpaper from Ripon Lee um, to travel to Tokyo, Japan. Um, it's going to the studios of the Kim Karakami Institute to be reproduced by the craftspeople using traditional um, techniques. At the end of last year I travelled to Tokyo to visit the craftspeople at the King Karakami Institute to talk about the process of reproducing the Ripon Lee paper. They're using um, techniques that have been recovered, that they were lost to Japanese culture um, and were refound um, by Mr. Uedo in the 1980s through extensive research. It's all handmade. The cherry wood um, is carved. It forms a huge roll around which the um, paper pulp is wound and um, the wet paper pulp is beaten into the pattern that is um, carved into the roll itself. The 19th century wallpapers at Ripon Lee was, were painted over by um, the last owner, Mrs. Louisa Jones, to modernise the house in the 1930s. Um, but underneath uh, is the, the, I guess, original patterning and, um, and all of that decorative information in the relief. Um, what we don't have, though, um, uh, is a kind of representation of what the, what, how, what the colours look like. And just the absolute spectacle of seeing this gilt wallpaper um, sparkling and shining um, and looking incredibly sumptuous. At our National Trust properties, of course, the gardens are as much a part of the history and the enjoyment and significance of the place as, as the buildings and the furniture and our other collection items. They're, they're a living collection, so they, they, dif they differ from our other collections. They need a different kind of management. Despite all the conservation in the world, we know they won't be with us forever. What, what's great about the legacy of not just Rip and Lee, but all our, all our historic gardens in Victoria is the vision that the people who planted them out had, knowing that they would never see the gardens reach their full potential as we enjoy today. So they planted them out knowing that we would enjoy them well after they are gone.
That's one of the biggest parts of our job here at the National Trust is managing our ageing population of trees. And with all those issues it's easy to overlook what, something that's just as important which is providing our next generation of significant trees. Uh, and that's something that we've begun here at Rip and Lee in the last year. We've increased our tree population by 15%. So we've done a lot of work in the last year or so going through especially old photographic albums and it's amazing to pick out a lot of our trees that are now 140, 150 years old, when they were small, identify what was where, identify what's been lost over the years, what should be replaced. Of course, this is only one of our gardens. We have literally tens of thousands of trees across our properties around the state, and we need active tree replacement programs for all of those properties as well. And so we will roll that work out in the coming years, starting at Rip and Lee and then around our other major gardens throughout the state. There's a bigger picture here and we now understand that we need more trees as our cities become bigger, have more population, that trees are going to help keep our cities livable, keep our cities healthy and clean. And I also think that trees are one of the best investments you can make in our heritage and in our future. Uh, for a relatively small outlay of a few hundred dollars you have something that will grow and grow and grow in value and significance into the future and well into the next century where it will be of immeasurable value by then. Uh, dress is in the Trust's collection um, because it's in a beautiful example of the work of couturier Hall Ludlow. Um, Hall Ludlow has been described as Australia's first couturier um, and given that he set up his salon in, on Collins Street in Melbourne um, and that's where he started, it means that this, this um, gown is perfect for our collection because we do focus our, our um, collecting policies on locally produced fashion. The National Trust costume collection um, is over, has over 3,000 items in it. Um, they range from um, 1850s dinner dresses all the way through to um, reticules and sovereign holders, some makeup, false hair, accessories, so even, even department store boxes. So what we've really got here is an amazing repository of um, locally produced fashion. We have such a significant collection and not only is it important to local um, history but it also means that the nature of the collection being textile based means it's incredibly fragile. So storage of the collection is crucial, good storage, environmental controls, um, stable relative humidity to kind of halt deterioration. Uh, it is fundamental to any museum collection that it has um, these proper, proper controls in place. The, the costume collection is an amazing resource. Um, it's an, it is an important source for researchers, for students, um, historians generally. It gives us a really interesting picture in the, of the life of Melbourne, particularly 19th century. Um, and also as a form of inspiring others to, to participate in fashion. Um, as a catalyst for design, we would love to see um, emerging practitioners use the collection more and more. And, and just just make it as accessible um, as possible to, to everyone, that's our aim.